Hi guys, Abs here and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we find high authority expired domains, how we go ahead and spam check those domains to make sure that they are spam free and to make sure that they're the, they are the kind of domains that we want to register and include into our own private blog networks. Now, when it comes to spam checking domains, guys, then it's probably one of the most tiresome aspects of finding these expired domains. I've been doing it for quite some time and in this video, I hope to provide you with some pointers and some tips that are going to help you um, that are going to help you make spam checking domains much quicker, much faster, and hopefully much more manageable um, for you. So in this video, guys, I'm going to also assume that you guys have already found your expired domains, and now you're in a position to go ahead and spam check those domains to see if those domains are appropriate for your network. Um, now, if you haven't found your expired domains, guys, and I've got different videos that actually point you and show you exactly how we go out there to find expired domains as well. But in this video, guys, I'm going to be focusing on spam checking these domains which is a very big part of actually um, going ahead and actually um, getting these domains. Okay, so in front of me, I've got a list of expired domains, guys. Um, I've got a list of, well, it's a fairly large list of 26,328 domains in total. Now, if I was to go through every single one of these, it's going to be a massive headache. So instead, what we do, guys, is we send we send these, met we send the domains over to somewhere like Majestic. Um, we then get the metrics, and then we work with the metrics now your metrics will actually paint a picture about your website um, without even actually looking at it guys well basically it paints the picture of the authority of your website and by the metrics we're gonna be able to see the kind of domains that we want to actually go after and once we have found those kind of domains guys we're gonna have to go ahead and spam check them to make sure that they haven't been spammed and to make sure that they are gonna actually provide us value if we were to register them um, and introduce them and add them into our own private blog networks so let me just show you exactly what we've got down here I'm going to show you how I eradicate about 80% 90% of the domains from the get-go um, and then how we go ahead um, and the kind of you know things that I look for in the off-site factors before I go ahead and look at the archives um, and have a look to see if it's been spammed um, so anyway guys this might be a fairly long video which I do apologize about um, but I'm going to try to go through at least about three websites with you um, so that you get a better expert understanding of how I do this um, now we with these three websites we're not going to be able to find all of the kind of issues that we're going to come um, that we're going to um, we're going to face we're going to be faced with when we come to look at these um, domains um, but you know what you will get a good understanding of how to save time and everything as well okay so the, what I do is I work with um, external backlink counts I work with referring domains the trust flow and the citation flow um, and the trust ratio now the trust ratio guys is basically taking the trust flow and dividing it by the citation flow to get a trust ratio now basically if you have a look at trust flow as the amount of authority or if you have a look at it as the how authoritative are the links pointing to it or how close are those links to authoritative websites and if you have a look at citation flow as link juice so what we're doing is we're taking the authority and dividing it by the link juice to come up with a trust ratio. And this trust ratio, the higher the number, then it tells us um, that, you know what, this website here um, has more quality links pointing to it. So it just lets us know that, you know what, it's got quality links or it's got weak links pointing to it. So if you have a look at this as having a low trust flow and then having a high citation flow, then this number's, the trust ratio is going to be lower, which means the quality of the links is going to be lower. OK, so anyway, what I like to do now, guys, you don't have to use this. You can use this if you want to, guys. Sometimes I know there's some users out there that actually like to sort by highest to lowest and then only go for the trust ratios that are above one or something like that. But you know what? I don't really pay much attention to that. I just like to have these metrics down here. So when I am doing my manual checks, I can actually refer to them as well. OK, so let's take a look down here. The very first thing I like to do, guys, is order all of the list by highest trust flow okay and then for example I'm going to go ahead and remove anything below a seven and the reason I'm going to remove anything below a trust flow seven guys is because I've got so many domains that I don't even want to check anything below a trust flow seven okay instead I want to focus my time and I want to focus my efforts on anything above a trust flow 
7. Okay, so I've deleted anything below a trust flow 7. Now we're left with 3,345 domains. Okay, but just one thing that I want to point out before we move on from here, guys. Just because this is a trust flow 7, or just because, um, it, you know, you've got the other ones that are trust flow 8 or, or what have you, that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be higher. So let me just tell you, let me show you exactly what I mean. When you come over to Majestic SEO, okay, when you type in your URL down here, you have this version of the URL. You've got the subdomain version, you've got a root domain version, you've got a path and you've got a URL. What you notice down here, guys, is we've got a root domain version of 99 and we have a subdomain version of 98 Trustflow. Okay, you're not going to be able to do this unless you want to use all of your Majestic credits, guys, um, to get all four different URL versions put them next to each other and then get the, all the trust flow. So instead what I've done is I've actually taken this URL for example, we'll actually use this as an example here as well. I've taken this URL or all of these URLs and I've added the subdomain values. This is saying seven and eight for trust flow and citation flow. Let's add that down here. Okay, and that was a subdomain, guys. So as you can see, we've got seven. Okay, we've got seven and seven, guys. Okay, but if I actually change this over to path or somewhere else, then you might actually see a higher metric down here. So on this occasion, we haven't. Let's just take another one, guys, because sometimes you actually see, just so that I can give you a better example of what I mean. Okay, so this is five. If I go to subdomain, it's seven and nine. If I go over to path, as you can see, it's a nine and 18. Okay, if I go over to URL, um, it's a nine and 18. So we weren't going to, we weren't able to know that this was going to be a nine um, until we actually came over to Majestic. But I'll actually show you exactly how I get past this as well. So anyway, all of these are subdomain values, guys. Okay, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and sort the referring domains by smallest to largest. And the reason I'm doing this, guys, is so that I can see the referring domains or the websites towards the top with the least amount of referring domains first. And as you can see, we've got lots of good trust flow, guys. Unfortunately, or well, fortunately, we're going to be removing these guys. The reason behind it is because I don't like to register anything that has lower than 10 referring domains. Now, the logic behind this, guys, is let's just say, for example, you had, you know what, let me just remove these and I'll continue my conversation. Okay, let's just say, for example, this website here had 10 referring domains and the external backlinks were 10 as well. If it was to have one link removed from this, it would mean one tenth of the link juice has been removed. I can't handle that, guys, because I want to have many more. Well, you know what? I want to have some security knowing that I've got multiple domains that are linking back to my website as opposed to just one or two that are building up the trust. Sometimes, you know what? You might find a link on a brilliant site that only has one link um, and you might want to go ahead and get it, guys. So that's entirely up to you. OK, what I do now, guys, is again, I will sort these by trust flow highest to lowest. OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight everything that's above a trust flow 10. Okay, and the reason behind this, guys, is because I want to focus my efforts on anything that's above a trust flow 10 for now, because I've still got thousands of domains down here. Okay, so I might as well focus my efforts on the more authority ones than the less authority ones. So I'll highlight these in green. Okay, and what we can see, we had something like about 900 or something domains down there. Okay, what I'm going to do now is, again, I'm going to sort these from smallest to largest. And the reason I'm going to sort the referring domains from smallest to largest, guys, is because when I see something like this, 5,433 referring domains, 6,633 um, external backlinks, that's just too many backlinks for me to handle. Okay, too many backlinks for me to go through, too many anchor text variations that I want to, you know, I want to risk. Um, and you know what, I would rather focus on quality over quantity. We know that this has got a 23 trust flow from the 16 quality links that it's got pointing to it. And we know that this has got 20 trust flow from 5,433 links pointing to it. So when we have a look at the actual trust ratio as well, guys, it tells us here as well. So that this trust ratio is still above one, OK, which is cool. Um, but it tells us that the links pointing to this website are weaker than the links pointing to this website. And this is, um, you know what, we might have actually used this one as a better example because this has got lots of ex um, it's got ex lots of external backlinks, but fewer referring domains. But this one has got more referring domains. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually sort these from smallest to largest, guys. I'm going to try my best not to speak too much so that we can actually go through these as quick as possible. And now, guys, I'm going to go through these um, and actually you know, try and actually work with them. What I might do, guys, if I actually find some that have like something like 97,025 external backlinks, I might just remove that from the list and not even check it. OK, but one thing to keep 
in mind, guys. Um, it, you know, I'm n nothing's going to be 100% correct. What I'm doing is giving you kind of filters that I use myself um, based on experience. OK, but I should also also mention as well, guys, that just because a website has 10 referring domains, OK, and because it has 97,025 external links, doesn't necessarily mean that somebody has gone out there and spammed a certain site. What it could mean is that the website that one of the links are being put on work in such a structure or the theme works in such a structure that you know what it's it has multiple pages and it had tags pages and what have you with your links on there guys okay so um don't just discount them because of that but if you've got thousands of domains to work with like i have guys then you know what come down here and just remove the ones that you just don't even like the look on um okay but what you can see from here guys is you know what we've got these in green OK, and then we've got a big gap without any green and then we've got a big gap with green, without green, with green. So I'm going to be focusing on the green ones because I know they ha that they have the most authority um, and they're looking pretty good. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's start working with this. So I'm going to take the first URL now, guys, and I'm going to go over to archive.org and I'm going to add the URL in here and I'm going to click on enter. Now, if you don't see any snapshots, then sometimes you might have to add the www dot or the HTTP and sometimes you have to remove them as well. And sometimes archive is super, super slow. OK, so what I like to do, guys, to make sure that I get this done in the quickest time frame possible is open three snapshots in three tabs. The way I do this is I go over to the very last. OK, I'll go over to the very first one first. OK, and then I'll open up um, the very first snapshot. Then I'll go over to somewhere in the middle, guys, with some action on here. OK, so I'll go to 2014 for this example, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up this one here. OK, I'm going to actually start from here, guys, because on this one, we're going to be working backwards. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing as soon as I open these up, guys. And on this one, I'm going to open it here. OK, so what we have down here now, guys, is we have the very first capture in 2009. It still hasn't got a domain on here or it still hasn't got a website on here, but it's only just got the domain. OK, if I go over to the next one, guys, in 2014. So this is a middle snapshot now. And as you can see, welcome to Corniva Tasty. OK, this looks like an actual um, food website. We're still waiting for this to load, guys. So let's just give it a couple of seconds. OK, so here we go. Um, OK, this looks like a food website. And now I'm going to go over to the very last snapshot, which is 2016. Um, and as you can see, it looks exactly the same. OK, I'm going to go back over to the very first one. OK, as you can see, so in 2012, guys, um, the website looks exactly the same to the website in 2016. OK, what we want to do from here and obviously in the middle as well, guys, in 2014, we know that the website's looking exactly the same. Now, there was a little drop off down here, guys. So we had um, two snapshots in 2009, but then in 2010 and 2011, we had nothing down there, guys. So that could mean the website was redirected or the website dropped off or the website was just registered and somebody thought of the website name or some something and I didn't actually do anything with it until 2012. But as soon as 2012 come up, guys, as you can see, it was a website about some food shop. <laughs> okay, 2014 looks the same and 2016 looks the same. What we're going to do now, guys, is let me just show you on here. Okay, so from the snapshots that we opened in 2016, we're going to be working our way back. From the snapshots that we opened in 2014, we're going to be working our way back. From what we opened in 2009, we're going to be working our way forward. The idea is, is that we're going to try and look at as many snapshots as possible so that if we find any discrepancies or if we find any issues, um, then we can actually go ahead and actually, um, you, you know, find them before we actually go ahead and register them. OK, so this is now in 2013. Looks the same, guys. I'm going to go one more forward. Um, this now is also in 2014 still. I think it's still loading the page, um, but we'll click on the back button again anyway. Um, and this here is 2016, guys. OK, so everything is looking really good, guys. You've even got some social icons down here. We can look at these and I can see from the bottom left hand side, guys, this says Covina Tasty. So this is Facebook.com pages Covina Tasty. Covina Tasty is this here as well, guys. So everything's looking really good. What I'm going to do is check these links inside of this website as well. Um, OK, so this here is an internal link this here is an internal link this here is a link to the Google Maps um, and we can actually look at Google Maps as well if you wanted to okay but this is going to show the HTTPS version guys uh, sorry it's going to show the um, 
archives version. Hopefully this will show us here. Okay, so there we, there we go, guys. We've already been able to see straight away. Look at this, guys. Corvina Tasty is a website. It has an actual location. They're linking out to it from their own website here. We've actually got the address down here as well. All these links here are internal links. It looks good. They have legitimate Facebook and everything groups. Well, I didn't actually look at them, guys, but um, you can actually go ahead and look at it. I'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll work out um, unless it's been closed or what have you. Um, and it looks like a nice restaurant okay it also told us that from the very first snapshot a proper snapshot the website looks exactly the same to the very last snapshot as well we're working our way back we're working our way forward when 2014 there when 2013 here guys we're just about to see almost all of the history now um so here we go 2014 guys we're in 2013 here and here we go, um, 2013, 2016, and everything's looking really, really cool. Okay, what I would probably do then, guys, is have a look at some of these pages here. Um, maybe have a look and see if all these check out as well. Okay, um, just to make sure that everything is looking good. Now, there might be a limit on... Um, archive guys if there is a limit um, then you might not be able to open all of these pages at once okay but as you can see from here this is the fast food page um, and it looks good mozzarella sticks onion rings and fish burgers and chill chili bacon avocados okay and i'm going to close out this page now and we have a look down here tasty desserts banana split banana split with another angle um painting of banana split so it looks good guys um it looks like a legit site um this is the reviews page i think no featured in the news covina tasty is in the news so it's telling you about when they were in the news so this looks like a really good website guys um now they have got links down here down here um but they get, they're giving links to where they have actually been featured. So, for example, they've got Yelp and, um, I don't know, whatever that you have down here. So everything's looking really good, guys. What we're going to do now, okay, I just wanted this to go over to 2014. Um, but while that's happening, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this URL and we're going to go over to Majestic. Okay, we're going to paste this inside the Majestic. Okay, and we're going to have a look at the actual website profile. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we've got a subdomain of 30. Uh, oh, sorry, we've got a path of 30 um, and a subdomain of 22. Fantastic stuff. So we only had this down as a 22. It's actually a 30, guys. What I will do from here is the very first thing I'll do is have a look at the anchors. Okay, so I can see from here the anchors look good. Vegetarian, Covina, Covina Tasty, Tasty website. Um, so it looks really good cool guys um and it looks clean okay what i can do also is i can actually have a look at the backlinks here as well okay from here i can see um the locations that these um were were on the actual trust flow of the actual page the actual trust flow of the actual domain um so it looks good guys we've got backlinks from sources that are linking that actually have the trust flow on the actual um page and we also have real good trust flow on the domain as well guys okay but what i like to do first is hide deleted backlinks we don't want to show deleted backlinks guys okay what you can do here as well is have a look at the top pages as well um by looking at the top pages it tells you what the top pages are so for this occasion guys on this website this is really the only top page page on here okay so this website checks out guys it looks good um we've gone over and we've had a look at all of the history um, and everything looks perfect guys i'm going to go ahead and register this well i'm not going to register it because we've done this on call instead i'm going to leave it with you guys if you guys want to go ahead and register it you can if you don't then you don't have to uh just do understand that this is actually gone um this is in a video um so you might not want to register it um but yeah i'll leave it to you guys if you want to register it and sell it then that's entirely up to you Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at the second website. Hopefully, I'll be able to do this much quicker, guys, um, without too much explanation. So what I'll do, I'm going to actually remove all of these tabs. I'm going to delete them all. I'm going to go over to archive.org, and I'm going to paste in my URL. Okay, again, guys, we're going to start from the start, and I'm going to open up three um, snapshots. Okay, the very first snapshot, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to open up. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to the middle somewhere. But as you can see, we've got all of these down here. Each one of these lines, guys, I believe indicates a snapshot or indicates a period, maybe a month. And in that month um, that there's been a snapshot. Now, there might be two snapshots in a month. There might be three snapshots in a month with higher lines might indicate that. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, but what 
this tells me here as well guys is that this area here had much more snapshots than any of these areas here so it looks like there was a lot of activity going on around here okay so i'm going to open up 2014 and i'm going to use that as my middle um as my middle snapshot area to look at now these in green guys tell you down here that they indicate 301 or 330 something redirects okay and what i'm going to do also is i'm going to go over to the very end and I'm going to also open up the last screenshot as well. Okay, just remember guys, from the end, we're going to be working our way backwards. From the middle, we're going to be working our way backwards as well. And from the start, we're going to be working our way forwards. Okay, so this is the very first snapshot, guys. 2000, January 15th, 2000. Okay, listen to a welcome message from the Yank. Okay, so this is what the website was about. You like it, you don't like it, guys. This was the original history of the website. Okay, now let's have a look at the middle. This was 2004, guys. Okay, it doesn't look like the same website. Um, or, you know what, it doesn't look too cool. It looks like it probably had some Google AdSense or something on here. Um, but straight away, guys, when I look at the right-hand side in the scroll bar, um, I can see that this is scrolling. So I'm going to scroll down, see if there's anything down here. And have a look at this, guys. This website, I would abort straight away. This is all anchor text, okay, and it's pornographic anchor text, um, and it's also linking out to, um, you know, question, questionable porn websites. So I would leave this straight away, guys, okay, and if I have a look at the end, then it's just telling me that there's a domain error. So anyway, I would come out of this straight away. So what this has allowed us to do, oh, look at this, this is showing us some Chinese text or something down here. Oh, look at this. As you can see, it's been repositioned by someone else. Um, and they've also got their links on here as well, guys. Um, okay, so... So, yeah, this is probably something that you want to avoid. Well, you will want to avoid it, guys, as mentioned, all this anchor text down here. So, anyway, let's move on from here, guys. Um, I don't want to spend more time on here. I think it's very clear why we're moving on from this. What we're going to do now is actually highlight this in red so that we know we've been through this, we've spam checked it, and it's not suitable. I'm going to take the third one now, guys, and let's use this as our last one. Okay, I'm going to add this inside of here. And again, guys, what we're going to do is open up three snapshots. We're going to go over to the first one, okay, and I'm going to open up a snapshot in here. I'm going to go ahead to a second location as well. Remember, we're working our way back from the second one. So on this one, I think I'm going to go from 2012, guys. It looks like there was a lot of activity there as well. Okay, so we'll go to 2012. And on the last one, we'll go over to the very latest snapshot. So this in orange again, guys, indicates that the URL was not found. Okay, so... There we go, three snapshots, guys. Straight away, I don't know if you can see, but just by the actual title of the actual tabs, it tells me something that I'm not gonna wanna go for. And the reason behind it is because it's in a different language. Now, it doesn't tell me it's spammed, but it tells me it's in a different language. But yeah, as you can see from the titles alone, guys, um, you know, it tells us a lot straight away. Let's go over to the first one. Well, there you go, guys. I don't even need to move on from the first one now because I can see the tabs. Okay, this is here is telling us that it's Licensing Executives Society Poland. The website is called lepoland.org. Okay, it makes sense to me. This is what the website's about. Go over to the middle snapshot that we took, guys, which was in 2012. As you can see straight away, guys, um, the language has changed. Um, if you have a look at these links towards the bottom, let me just take this down a little bit again so you can see. Okay, if you have a look at these links towards the bottom, guys, um, then these links down here are also linking externally to other websites, guys. Okay, so this is a website that you'd want to abort and get out of straight away. And as you can see, it's probably probably been taken over again, or um, they've had a change of theme or something on here. So anyway, guys, um, Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go through any more with you today, um, and I do appreciate you guys have lots of things to do as well, um, but I do really hope that if you guys are looking to spam check websites, then this is going to help you, and it's going to show you how to do it in a relatively quick way. Um, but yeah, what you do, guys, is um, you first of all get your Majestic metrics, or you get your metrics from whatever source you want to work with, um, work with your tri trust flow, remove all the ones that you don't want, um, work with the referring domains, remove all the ones lower than 10 guys. Um, if you want to work with trust flow or trust ratio, you can do. If you want to work with ex um, external backlinks and you can do, my main ones to work with guys are referring domains and trust flow. Um, and then I actually go over to archive.org. Um, I have a look at, I open up three snapshots in three different parts in time guys. Um, and then I actually have a look at them. If everything 
um, tallies up, guys, that's when I'll actually go over to Majestic SEO. Um, in fact, what we can do, guys, uh, let's just take this for example. Uh, we'll just use this and we'll add that into Majestic SEO um, to show you what we'll do. So let's just say, for example, you've gone over, you've done your spam checking and everything down here, guys. Um, you found this website and you said, yeah, it looks really cool in archive.org. You'll go over now to Majestic. You'll have a look at the anchor text. You'll see if the anchor text looks good um, to see if it um, works with this. Um, and if it does, guys, um, you can actually go ahead and have a look at the backlinks as well. You can look at the backlinks individually, hide the ones that are deleted, guys, because they're not going to be any good to you. Um, and then you're going to be able to see where they're being added to. You're going to be able to see the actual trust flow of the page that they're being added to. So as you can see down here, this has got some quality links on there. You're going to be able to see the trust flow of the actual domain that they're being added to. Got some quality ones on there. And as you can see, guys, you can actually see where it's being linked to as well. So this one is being linked to um, an internal page in the website. Um, and it's probably going to be high in authority as well, because it's got two nice trust flow links pointing to it. Um, in fact, we can go to pages and this will show us the top pages. And here you go, guys, top pages, it's got four top pages, um, three or four of them, sorry, it's got five top pages. Um, four of them have um, good, sorry, Two of them have good trust flow, 2715. Um, and you know what, the other ones have got links pointing to them as well. Um, so anyway, guys, this is how we spam check domains. This is how we make sure we can eradicate the majority of domains without having to spend so much time on there. This is how we work with archive.org, guys. We work with it, you're probably working with it. Others that are spam checking are working with it as well, guys. It's not the easiest tool to work with. It's not the easiest process to go through. But by following some of the tips and pointers that I've given you in this video, guys, um, this is the kind of method that I use myself. Um, I haven't been able to find a better way at the moment. Um, but yeah, you know, if you guys know a better way, then please do share it with us as well, um, because then I can update this video as well. Um, and really get us sharing some time, uh, sorry, saving some time. The last thing we want to do is spend more time than we need to um, so on, on anything that we do. So anyway, guys, this is Abs Ravji, and I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I really hope there's something that you can take away from this as well.